welcome to our multiple guests, uh, including Casper, the ghost, <laughs> and any other ghosts that may show up. Um, I would I would like to take this um, time just to for public comment uh, about the um, tremendous response of our community to Woden's and her family's uh, loss. It really has been uh, amazing and uh, and heartfelt. And you know her comment about this is the community I'm I'm just really happy to be living in was just uh, just great. So I mean it's, it's tragic that that she's and her family are going through that. Uh, but the community response has been pretty uh, significant and uh, and stunning. So I'm, I'm very, you know, thank you for Middlesex for doing that. Um, any agenda revisions? Um, I, I was wondering if we might be able to clean this up a little bit, just because there's some things on here that I don't know. They seem like they've just been holdovers for a long time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I don't see us getting anywhere with them anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And then also, I'd like to uh, maybe talk more, get an update on the uh, search process. Okay. Um, yeah. The principal. Yep. Um, uh, and I would like us to um, schedule an executive session at the end just to talk about negotiations. Okay. Um, for an update on that. Uh, so we'll do that. Is there someone here that's, are you? Are you uh, yeah, yeah, I can talk yeah, to yeah. Um, Okay, um, so let's so let's do the consent agenda. Is there uh, any motion to approve uh, the minutes for the meeting from January 10, 2019? So moved. Second. Um, any comment? I have one one comment. Okay. Um, it was uh, just that it was. Um, Page three, right sort of up to the above the motion one. Um, Mr. Taliaferro was uncomfortable with asking taxpayers to pay more money that is not invested in school. He is now in favor of reducing the capital fund by 30,000 because the reserve money can be transferred. Uh, my, so what I said was my, my, I was in support of that if that allowed us to get below the threshold, as an effort to get below the threshold. So just like at the end of that sentence, but only to get under the threshold. Um, okay. Any other changes? So let me just, just in terms of the minutes, was that discussion you had at the time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I specifically because said that I could live with that reduction if it meant us getting, if in a way to get us below the threshold. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, any other changes? All in favor of approving the minutes as amended? Aye. 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 Okay, is there a motion for um, approval of the minutes uh, from uh, January 29, 2019? Second. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor of uh, approving the minutes from January 29, 2019, please say aye. Aye. Aye? Okay. Okay, so now, um, do you have some uh, suggestions on um, clearing up or modifying the discussion agenda for this evening? Yeah, I'm wondering if um, 3.4 and 3.7, um, those, those were topics that Woden was really championing. Yep. And, um, and then I don't know even about 3.2, that was something that um, um, Caroline had brought up, but I don't know what, um, if we're prepared to talk about that or not. Um, I'm not sure we are, <clears throat> although I was hoping to talk about a, uh, something we can put out that'll explain the act police process right now for people. I think it's a little confusing. We can do that as part of the yeah, 46 update. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, and then as from a, the only other thing was the action agenda. 
uh, was 5.2. Um, I don't know what. Right. We, okay. So we will. Um, do we want to just talk about just tabling them or eliminating them? Because if they keep turning up and we're not doing I, anything I th about it. I them. think, well. Oh, well let, me, let me. I'm sorry. Um, I am. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I, I waver because we keep on tabling them and then they keep on coming back. Um, is this the resolution on Romney educational goals? Well, there, I think there's a, you're talking about all of them, right? I am. Each, yeah. each, let's take we, each one individually. Um, so let's go with 3.2, board email correspondence. Is there a suggestion that we table that or eliminate it? Or put it on for the future agenda? Because some of these should, should go to the future. Um, with, uh, I think we can I think we can table out the future of agenda, especially with the next meeting potentially being the reorganization meeting and kind of talking about all the sort of the structural responses or duties and where, how we're responding and all that we could talk about because I think that's, that's where this all originated uh, a year or so ago. Okay. From. So we can table 3.2. Uh, increased data collection on running school quality. I think we should put that for the future um, because that's yeah, at least important information to get, I would think. Okay. On an ongoing basis. Is that something that you are going to then take uh, on? I you know, can't commit to that, but okay. I think it's something that we should be reminded about if it's on the future agenda items. Allison, any comment? I'm wondering if we could, I feel like we have so much going on right now with this potential merger, and we haven't heard anything about even whether or not we have a stay at this point. So I guess I would be in favor of maybe tabling these things until we know if we have a stay. It feels sort of silly to bring them up if we're being dissolved, unless we just want to have those discussions on record I going think, forward. I, I think it's worth going to have them on record, because um, at least it puts a, um, the Romney Board position out in the public on some of these items. Okay. Um, otherwise, it just, just, yeah, I think that that would be... And has so Rhoda resigned, right. or is she still a member of the board who just is not here? She is still a member of the board, and I haven't seen a letter of resignation, and her term will right. expire in March. So maybe we could see if she could call into the next meeting, so she could specifically speak on data collection. Um, I think by the next meeting, next she meeting will, will be no the longer be yeah. Member. Next meeting will be the new, the next board. Really? Yeah. So quick. How did that happen? What, so can I make a suggestion? Sure. Was, why don't we Why don't we table these, but rather than just automatically putting them on the next agenda that comes up is that they can be listed as future agenda items down below and if at some point in time we decide to take them up we can then move them into the actual agenda does that make sense sure yeah. and i feel like maybe with even the new board members and stuff we could specifically ask like who wants to be a champion for this thing because somebody's going to need to guide the discussion on that for it to be useful i think and have ideas and data yep Okay, so I, uh, I would move that we table uh, 3.2, 3.4, and 3.7 um, for uh, and, and put them in the future agenda items category. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Or have we had our discussion? <laughs> I think we did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that will bring us then to town meeting preparation. Um, and so we have town meeting on the 5th of March, I think it is, and um, we are, we, we have a meeting, I think, on the 4th, the night before it running, mm -hmm. uh, to discuss the budget, uh, even though it's not going to be voted upon. Um, so um, I'm happy to, to go and sit at Romney at uh, 6 o'clock in the library. Uh, with anybody else who wants to come. I usually think two of us usually go mm -hmm. uh, and do that. Um, and and also, uh, well, how would you feel about setting up a table at town meeting um, if there are questions about, well, why aren't we voting on the budget this today um, as we normally do and just have a, uh, at least have it available as a uh, uh, informational table. And I'd be glad to staff that as well. 
with someone else. Yeah, that, I mean, if we want to take shifts. Yeah, we want them. I'm open to, are you open to that? Yeah, we'll do that? Yeah, okay. okay, so let's do that. Um, uh, and, and be also a time for information about F46 and where we are stationed and where we are positionally on that. Okay. You know, I'm, um, you know, Amy, do, do, um, I know that we used to have the tables along the hallway going into town meeting for Girl, Girl Scouts and historical society and things like that. Mm -hmm. Are we still doing that? Um, I've not gotten work from the group, so they're welcome to. Um, we can certainly get you some tables <coughs> from the library or okay, um, so whatever size you just So we could set up in the hallway? Sure, sure. It be, okay, great. Hey, Marilyn, welcome. Um, so, uh, next up is Act 46 update. Um, as we heard uh, from Matthew, there are a couple things pending. One is that the House has uh, passed a bill that would um, give a one-year moratorium, basically, on um, this, uh, towns being forced to merge. And I do think we fall within the category that is covered, because it's not a blanket um, yeah. moratorium. Is I do. Yeah. I do think we fall within the category. Well, it's, yeah, it's it's basically. It's if, named in the oh, we are okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. It seemed like there was up for question when I was reading about it, but. Well, I think Janet and Ansel right. made sure that we were we were in there somehow. Um, so if that is taken up by the Senate, uh, and um, passed, uh, I tend to think the governor, based on his public comments about more time, would sign it. So uh, there would be a. Uh, essentially a, a one-year delay mm -hmm. in any of these matters moving forward. Um, we, there's also on Friday a hearing up in Franklin Superior Court where the, the litigation is currently pending before Judge Mello. Uh, and the issues that are going to be dis argued there is motion to stay, um, motion to dismiss. The state has filed a motion to dismiss the, the lawsuit uh, and the motion to stay. Um, you know, I have no sense because I'm not involved in the lit litigation as to what the uh, chances are that uh, the judge would rule from the bench. I tend to think experientially it's not likely given the magnitude of, of the decision. Um, so that that's a, an unknown. Uh, if he did and issued a stay, then kind of like the, the legislation, things would be at a halt. Mm -hmm. And we would just proceed, uh, I think, in our current form as we are until the uh, the legal issue was decided probably by the Vermont Supreme Court because I'm, yep. I'm pretty confident either way um, that depending on what the judge um, would actually let me take that back if the judge decided against the schools um, he might he would probably dissolve the stay uh, which would then let merger go forward uh, and but then the House bill would. Well, but it has, it has to, the to House bill and the Senate. Yeah, it has when, to, when does it go to the floor of the Senate? Yeah, it has, has to come out of committee first. Yeah. And there's, I mean, it's, that's, there's a lot of question marks on what's going to happen. Because the Senate did not seem as enthusiastic as no. the House. In, uh, in Nor as in open to bypass any of the committee's recommendation or lack thereof. Right. Of, so, yeah. So, it's, a, so it's kind of an open, open um, question as to what will happen. Um, if we are given a stay either by the judge or at some point by the legislature, legislature including the Senate, do we then not have all this formation of the transition board? Does that all, or does that still happen? That would not happen. Okay, so that would be paused. Right. The merger would be paused, and so what would happen is this board would continue on in its usual role um, beyond uh, January 30th into next year. Uh, okay, any other, any questions on Act 46? No, just uh, to also mention that the Articles Committee is meeting next Thursday to hopefully finalize what, what I guess will amount to recommendations, uh, recommended articles to Full the new unified board, unified board yep. to do with with as they wish. Right. Um, um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, next up, we have the um, building use for Middlesex community access. 
Um, Caroline and I are supposed to get together uh, and work on the um, policy that Amy's currently using um, for uh, building access. Uh, she and I have not done that yet. Okay. Um, so this, we will do this for our next meeting in terms of having modifications. Um, have there been any problems, Amy? Well, I need the fee structure because I like literally am getting several inquiries every week yep. and I can't really charge in an equitable way. Yeah. So if you could let me know who is getting free building use, who's getting charged, what the amount is, um, who we view as outside, um, who is viewed as serving students, that'd be helpful. Okay, what, um, are you, what are you currently doing now? We're giving them the building use form and as much as possible granting, but I thought I was going to get a policy tonight. Okay. At, or at least the procedures around the fees and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, there's one particular group that would be wanting to use the gym quite a bit, and I kind of had them waiting. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'd appreciate that is mainly around the fees. I just want to make sure. I believe the form, the new form is what we've been utilizing, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, before I, you know, say yes to AAU, I need to understand what your priorities are. Is that the group that's been asking? Uh-huh. AAU. Yeah. Um, but it's a new AAU group. So um, I've flagged for the first one that uh, there could be additional fees that are incurred based on what the board decides, um, but there's a second one now. Okay. Kelly, mm -hmm. do, you, oh, sorry, go ahead. do you have any knowledge of building use policies at other schools? No. Yeah, I handed all so I, yeah, we have. this. And I do have, I have the Berlin one from course. Berlin. And so my, my recall of our last discussion was that if it was an AAU type group, which is a profit making group, that they get charged fees. And there's not a they're not considered. Right, I don't but I don't. I need to know how much, Chris. Okay. You know, and um, I just want to make sure, you know, because it is something that is being accessed by our, our kids. Right. You know, I, I just want to apply it in a way that feels appropriate. Do we have Do we have a current um, charge that we're asking um, people to pay for for usage? I believe there uh, is. We, isn't there a fee already? We've not been charging. Okay, but there is I think it was it, within the pol originally the policy. There is the that potential there's a potential. Based on, yeah, I think okay. it's based on community cost, versus not community. Be, you know, it's just I need to know kind of okay. what to do in an equitable way. Yeah, and I don't want to uh, that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, charge without your say so. Okay. I have uh, an idea for this. Yes. But this is very fresh. So I don't know if you want to try to get back to work. We want to, are we going to try to deal with this now? Or are we going to um, try to... You know, if you need, you need a temporary decision? If I could have a temporary... I mean, literally, I, I don't want to hold them back. Okay. I also don't want, you know, our staff going out. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm following your priorities. So, um, if you could... I know that there's this AAU group, you know, I'm... Is it it's AAU with just Middlesex students, or is it... No, it's broad based. Be, okay. So, so, and there's, is there currently a first AAU group that is using the gym? Mm -hmm, it's and, middle school level. Okay. Are they uh, being charged? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so, um, however, I'm not sure that the scale is the same because it's two different levels. Uh, meaning, what's the first level? The one's middle school, one's for elementary kids. So, the. But it's still AAU? Right, so the use here could impact weekends, so that's why I need to know, like, are we charging time, time and a half for custodians? Is it based on their availability and willingness? You know, it's all of those issues that I'm just wanting to make sure we're... So with the, on. is there an AAU team that uses it during the week? What was that again? Is there an AAU team that uses it during the week so that the custodian is already there? I believe that's when the middle schoolers are using it is during the typical custodial hours. But I think that's what we have to be really clear and articulate about. Okay. You know, so because we're currently, you know, it's we've got grandfather groups, we've got new groups, we've got, um, you know, the, the what sex, middle sex groups. You know, there's a lot of, of action, which is great. Okay. So the... Um, 
if I make a proposal that to address the AAU issue, um, that uh, any AAU organization, since it is uh, not a community, like a Middlesex community group, even though there may be community members playing on the team, and that it's a, I think you have to pay a fee to be in the AAU mm -hmm. to the organization, uh, that um, uh, if we are requiring, if they need, we had to have the custodian time come in, that they pay for the, what time will reasonably be expected for the custodian to open the building up and then close it up again. Um, and on top of that, a $35 fee would be my proposal. Um, if anyone wants to entertain or suggest a different fee, I'd be happy with that. And this is just for this one group? Is this is just the AAU folks. Just because it's, it's a... It's that uh, season. What? It's It's immediate, long. right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and also that they, they have, you have to pay to be part of that. They, they're a money-making organization. Uh, and the other is that they have to have insurance um, to, to access the building. Um, any other suggestions on that? I was do, just wondering if does that cover everything? So does that cover any of the immediate issues in terms of the AAU? What about time for cleaning? Yeah. Are you you're proposing a custodial time plus uh, a flat fee? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I was, I was proposing time because of opening and closing of the building uh, because it's weekend. Well, but it's not just opening and closing, so we actually need somebody there if they're using the building, in case. So they have to be on site. Right. Okay. That's so how that Berlin has run um, ran it because it's not so much um, is the building open and secure or whatever, but more like is there somebody immediately there that knows the building? If somebody decides to stuff toilet paper or toilet right. paper towels down the toilet or something. Right. Um, so whatever time the custodian is there, they pay for their their time that it would cost us, which is time and a half on the weekend, I'm assuming, plus a $35 fee. And this is what I should apply just to AU until I hear from you a, a more expansive policy. Is that correct? I think so. Or okay. or any other AAU-like activity entity, where people other... have to pay to be part of it, as opposed to a volunteer like kids, you know, Middlesex kids coming to learn basketball skills through a parent just willing to do that. I would say not, but for... But they would still need insurance. Uh, you know, I, that's, that's the tough one because if it's a volunteer for, like, um, first and second graders coming in on the weekends to uh, develop basketball skills, because we've but had that before. That's, that's, that's covered through the this, yeah. That means, what? That's through the school. Typically that's usually through the basketball program. Okay. So, so then no, right? Uh, I was just wondering if we had, because I know that that was handed out, a copy of it was handed out to us last meeting. I've been trying but it's to not, it didn't find have it. fees really on it. Did it not have, I th not you know what, I actually thought it did. On the Berlin school website, you'll see their fees, they're really pretty clear. Really clear. So that's why, so maybe I can, I, I did go there, I think right after our last meeting, and I found the form, uh -huh. but, um, hmm. Do you have any idea where it is? Programs and services. Quick links. I have it here. I think. Wait. It's on two pages, but I think there's just front and back. So I think we have it in. Facility. Okay. Does that reflect what it is? Um, I believe this is the updated form. I think that's correct. But Berlin, there was another sheet that I gave you that was like that looked very similar as far as the building use form, and then they had another. It felt, it, Allison, it seemed like it was on like an opening page. Or yeah, I mean, families. this is what I found when I after I looked. Maybe I just didn't see it on there, but like these were not even not on the No, it wasn't on that. It wasn't on the sheet. Okay. No, I think it was on there. Because they have like school forms up in here, so I thought it was really easy to application. Maybe, but that's the one we just looked at. Yeah. And I didn't 
So I have, in, our, in our minutes it says, it's referring to, to Berlin, they charge $25 for use of space for under four hours, 35 if it's over four hours. We can use constitutes time and a half for custodian plus a user fee of either 25 or $35. Um, they do not charge for events that directly benefit students, such as Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. And then we also talked about insurance being an issue and yeah. custodial staff at Berlin being overworked and unable to fill these positions some of the time. Yeah. So are, are you also comfortable with putting that stipulation based on custodial availability? Yes, um, but just because that's, you have to have that, right? right? We have to have that. So the answer would be yes. Would you, how would you, would you feel comfortable with um, uh, someone other than a custodian coming? Could, they would not know the building, certainly, but just if we needed someone on site uh, who was uh, a, you know, associated with the school, um, but not a custodian, would you feel comfortable with that? I think it, it needs to be someone that's an uh, employee, mm -hmm. um, just because they're most familiar with with the with what with the building right. as well as like would be most aware of like if someone gets hurt, you know. Where the first aid kit is, yeah. Documenting around that. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I I would support that stipulation just yeah. because that's a need in order to access the building. Yeah, I think it would um, protect your investment the best. Yep. Okay. And what about insurance? Um, with the AU, they, they will require yeah. be required to. And do they show proof of insurance, or do they just say they have insurance? I would make them show it. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, to summarize, uh, that with the AAU programs that are currently asking to use the uh, school property if it's on the weekend, uh, then they um, have to pledge to be responsible for the custodial time needed to open the building, stay during the activity, close the building, and do any custodial work that may be needed, uh, plus... Uh, and it's like $35 a practice, basically. Whatever, whatever the cost. Um, and then, um, well, yeah, in addition, flat fee. Is that so what you let's say that the practices, because now I'm going to have to go back on the middle schoolers. Yep. And clarify that it's thirty-five dollars a practice. I would, you want to go twenty-five? I would go twenty-five. We, uh, so what about this? What if we charge what it is? So we should pay. I mean, if we're asking a custodian to come in, I feel like we should have to pay some sort of travel fee, and they get overtime pay, and then they should also be a cleaning fee. But we should also potentially have a fund where people can apply for either at a prior or post board meeting to be reimbursed for payment of that. So for we could decide for groups that are we have a lot of students or that we want to support in some way that we could pay for part of their fees. And that punts a little bit. It gives us some time with a more flexible rule without really laying it out for every person. And it also covers the actual cost because thirty-five dollars is not going to cover the cost of a custodian to be there for four hours mm -hmm. a week. The custodian thirty-five is in addition to. That's like a that's a user fee. Okay, in, in addition, addition to the custodial yeah. whatever their time staff is. Race. Right. I think most groups will choose times that there's a custodian there. Right. Quite honestly, and to get, keep it to the thirty-five, but you know. Is there a custodian there on weekends? No. Mm -hmm. Not unless you call them up and say, are you available, right? right. Unless That would need to be planned ahead. Mm -hmm. And we, so would we have three potential folks, Connor, mm -hmm. Nate, and Pete? Right. Okay. Um, and this is, this is a sort of a temporary... Temporary fix. Approval until we have this finalized. Yeah, we'll, and yes. So do you, do you want us to? I think we so need to. Probably. I need, need to clarify. Is okay. it thirty-five or twenty-five? <laughs> you know, I'm going to propose the twenty-five. Um, not that I'm and always about consistency with other the, schools, but Berlin for sounds the group like that has been using it. Do I go back, or do we go forward? Go forward. forward. I would say go forward. That they're they're not grandfathered into the future, but they're they don't have to pay retroactively either. Okay. So starting starting next week. Next time they want to use the building. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, okay. Next up is um, update on the roof and boiler. 
Um, Do you have any? The boiler, I think he's going to have the bid ready next week is what Bill said. Okay. Um, and how's the roof doing? Um, I have not heard an update on that. Have we had any leaking? Uh, we had leaking a couple of weeks ago. Was it from? And we followed up with no hide. Okay. Um, when the leak, uh, is there any way that we stop the leak or we just kind of let it, the weather play out? And kind of catch it off the ground. I mean, we're doing everything we can. No, I know. I understand, but it's um, we ended up having to have uh, snow removed from the roof because it had gotten so deep. Yeah. Um, just to also try to help mitigate later um, the melt. Um, past that, it's it's the difficult thing with the leaking is that it can start one place and show up another place. Yeah. So. Nate had a sense of where it was, and I think they tried to do a, a repair in the fall. But. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. So Mule Hike was, came out over the summer, right, to inspect? Yeah, and there's been more. I'd have to go back through my notes. Yeah. It's been so long. <laughs> I mean, so, I don't want to miss. No, that's fine. I just, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to, because this has been a saga. Um, so they've done work. But the problem persists. Is that right? Because the permanent fix was not able to be done before all the snow came. Okay, and so the permanent fix will happen. So as 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 and is that at a? Um, is that what the roof? Is that the roof part of this update on roof and boiler installation is about, or is this separate? Um, I believe that's separate. Okay. Do we have any idea of like what we're talking about? I, like, I assume we're gonna have to pay for this. No. I think it's no, covered. it's warranty. It is, warranty. It is, it is warranty. This is covered by warranty. Okay. And this just to remind everybody, I've started the digital like maintenance log, so all of the new stuff, the playground warranty, all of that is uploaded. All of our notes around the roofing, um, all of that is now digitally archived, so that we can ensure smooth. Transitions. What a nice idea. Yeah. Um, and do we have, do we keep track of employee hours spent taking care of the roof? And, and what, I, I, I'm just asking just in, for the purpose of reimbursement. Yeah. Um, um, I, I'm not sure if that's something that we can speak to that okay. in this moment. Okay, thank I you. Mean, we might be able to trace it back based on our log yeah. um, and some of the. I mean, all the photos of the damage, of the leaks, and the various points, it's all on there. So, um, you know, we might be able to trace that to, but no, I mean, we've been just going ahead and paying me. And doing it? Okay. The, um, We're working it during working hours. So. Does roof need to be shoveled further? <laughs> I, who knows with this winter, Chris? No, I, I'm so just my, I'm asking in terms of a community, check, like asking question. community members to come out and just as a volunteer effort. Oh my God, that sounds like a get at, on the roof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I would be concerned about liability. You know, I, you could be, and and it's not a bad concern. But I remember when we were doing insulation on the gym, we had a community effort over like two days, and people were insulated, the blowing in insulation. Do you remember that? What I year wasn't was around that? For that. I, I don't remember what year it was, time. but yeah. everyone it was had their, ten years ago, their masks on and walking in the in the um, over the uh, uh, up up in the roof, yeah. you know, blowing in the insulation. Yeah. So and and I would I would think the folks who show up know know what they're doing. And it's flat. We're talking about the flat roof. I'm not talking about the uh, slanted roof, but the flat roof where the uh, new stuff is. So. I, I can certainly let me know if you think he's my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, I already know what he was he <laughs> yeah, yeah. to be talking about liability. So, um, okay. are we concerned uh, with this, these new issues with once again the threat of um, possible molds? In the, in I think um, the other issue was more ongoing, and we've, we've been tracking where the issues are and remediating them. So. Okay. I'm hopeful, and we did a thorough check, if you'll remember, yep. to make sure that there was nothing else going on. So yep. I feel like we're taking good care of the health of kids. Great, thank you. So hopefully this summer it'll be a whole new Roof. world. Yeah. Um, 
Is it boiler holding up so far? Don't jinx it, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get some, like we'll get some melting years, pots right? in, the, in the room in the hallway. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, next up is uh, Rumney as an emergency shelter. Uh, and I um, brought this up because um, I'm going to ask that we vote to um, offer Rumney as an emergency shelter uh, when there is a need. Uh, and part of the um, discussion about, around, surrounding that is that it was a um, part of the discussion that we had with the community uh, when we were doing the, the renovation uh, to the building. Uh, and uh, it is, you know, I think it's just part of being a community um, like Middlesex where if there's a significant need uh, for an emergency shelter run this place that would be most efficient and effective, um, although it would disrupt school um, because if we wouldn't have, uh, the way it would work out is that school would not be in session while there's an emergency shelter there. Um, so, um, is that we couldn't have school? Is that because for the um, because of safety issues? Um, I think there's a number of a combination of issues. The the way the, uh, the the plan would work and it's it's not finalized is that they'd be looking at the gym and the kitchen access to the gym, kitchen, and the bathroom facilities, um, and but not to, not to shower. Uh, and it's just with kids in school, it would not fit to have. Uh, folks um, who you're not doing screenings on, you know, because it's open to the public uh, to come in. Um, and so the the emphasis would be last resort um, and for the uh, minimum amount of time before placement <coughs> to another uh, facility such as a hotel or something like that. So when they talk about an emergency shelter, they truly mean an emergency shelter. Um, in, in the event of an, you know, a disaster, so. So one thing that was surfaced by Nate um, during one of our checks of our water system mm -hmm. was um, there's seems to be some question as to whether or not we would be able to use it because of the water system, and it seemed to be linked to the capacity as well as the need to maintain the reservoir for the sprinkler system. So that's just an area we need to make sure we've checked into. There was additional um, work that, you know, we were, as far as like what we have to maintain with our private water system, that, has, that he surfaced some questions. I was not in direct communication with the, the folks, so Paul, I would encourage was it Paul you. Tendy? I would encourage you to check in with Nate um, regarding some of the specifics and what the parameters were. Um, but he said that it was related to the sprinkler, um, the, the holding tank for the sprinklers and the amount of water that would be necessary to, um, and so I'm not sure if they had a misunderstanding or what we need to check into, but I just needed so, to surface that. So was, was me thinking that there could, needed to be a limitation on how many could be in the they emergency? They didn't think that it could be utilized as that. Oh, at all? At all. Oh. So. And like I'm not sure uh, of the truth to that, but who, um, we so were who getting is some things tagged and checked out, and this came up. Was and this was um, so Paul. That's the Paul Tenty is the emergency <laughs> coordinator for Middlesex. Okay, so there's. There's question even on his end potentially of whether no, it sounds it's like question Paul. on Nate. Okay. Paul Nate, would not be questioning. Nate and the um, the people that help us with the water system. Water system. Okay. Okay. So I will so just check. With I will Nate check with me. He can put you in contact with those folks, Chris, so they can explain it. Okay. More specifically. Yeah, I'd be curious about capacity issues too. Is you know what, how many people could we? Uh, serve and okay. right. and, and we, we, we well we and could. I don't know if they were thinking the school would still be in session or what mm. but I just I think we were pretty clear last no I know yeah. I know we were but yeah. when Nate was talking with them I'm not sure what their understanding was yeah. so I just it's like I don't want it to pass without right. saying, hey, let's double check into this okay. um, to see what some of those stipulations were. 
Okay. Um, so you know we can we can build into the motion a contingency contingency that um, it would become effective provided we um, get confirmation that it can operate as an emergency shelter and not imperil our water system in terms of spring because that would be a hazard for anybody using it as a, an emergency shelter. Um, so it would have to pass that contingency. Yeah, and, and would we need to have certain equipment on site okay. to... Like cots and things like that? No, that no meaning like um, the defibrillator or like just like, um, I don't know, is that the right word? What are the eight... Um, well, those we, we do already have one of those? Okay, yeah. but do we... I mean, I'm just thinking of are there other th pieces of... I think if, if they would have to supply all of the equipment that they needed in order to use it, uh, we would not have we would not be purchasing anything um, for the emergency sh it to be an emergency shelter and staff. The um, it would come from. And they would approach me about animals too. Was that? Um, I I don't know. It's been months. Erica. Um, where the, did that land? Because that it, could be a potential. Um, Problem for students. You know, if we if it was a we we could make the stipulation that it would not be for animals, even though there's a strong push by Erica Holm that uh, when people shelter in emergency situations, them having their animals is a uh, benefit for the humans as well. Um, but if if it's an inconsistency with our our facility, we can say that and just say it would not extend to a folks animals. So, um, how would we find that out, if you know? Find what out? About whether or not uh, having animals in the yeah, school right would be they're inconsistent. Well, they're I don't not. see how we possibly could. Yeah. I mean, even the people who came to shelter, they could be have allergies, which would be life-threatening. Not to mention, how do you include animals? I mean, let's say my goat is my pet, or my Jersey cow is my pet. Like, why is that any less pet-like than, I don't know, I feel like that's a can of worms, man. No animals. we got to find other places for them. And we as a community can help with that, and we should, but... I feel like school. we cannot be okay. bringing animals into the gym. Then, then we can just have it as a policy that no animals. Okay. My guess is Berlin probably also has something in writing about this because their school is an emergency shelter. Okay. And then they had the flood a few years back, 10 years now, I think. The Red Cross actually comes in. If, if, if it gets activated as an emergency shelter, the mm -hmm. Red Cross meets you there. It depends on whether you sign up with the Red Cross, I think. Um, and that is a different... Uh, my understanding from Paul is that that's really a different type of because they take over, uh, and there there are certain things that they want you have on site uh, if you're if you're a Red Cross designated at um, shelter because they also provide you some equipment. Yeah. Um, but they also have plan. requirements in order to you know comply with their well, with the agreement. generator, right? That was it was yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also has greater restrictions on your impact on controlling your school. If it becomes an emergency shelter, the Red Cross, I think, has more control yeah. over the building yeah. uh, than, than would be under this situation. Because it's not, a, we're not talking about a Red Cross emergency shelter arrangement. We're talking about Middlesex emergency. If we can table this, I, I guess I'm willing to look into this and try to figure out the answer to some of these questions and what questions we should be asking that we have not asked okay. for our next meeting. But I was also hoping that we would write a summary, a kind of an Act 46 update for the community, and I'm not sure that I can do both of those. So that means somebody else. To be fair, I feel like my knowledge of that is tenuous at best, so I'm not sure I'm the best person for it. I would do it. Okay. In terms of the emergency? No, the oh, Act 46, 46 update. I can do that. Okay. So I'll, I'll put together an, uh, an emergency thing. I'll send it out to everybody. We'll see if there's any other questions we need to ask or any other things we need to be thinking about. And Nate, what's his last name? Who's his person? Picard. Picard? Picard. P-I-C-A-R-D. Okay. Okay, so I'm, shall we table it? The emergency until next. Is there public information out there about when you guys passed the bond? Like that predates me moving here, so um, I don't know much of the conversation that happened. Like, would I tell Sarah about that? You know what? I don't. You know what? I, I am sure that there's there's pamphlets or um, some type of um, flyer. Don't you, there was there was many many meetings. <laughs> Um, and there was, there was, in part of the design, um, actually designating a space um, because they, you know, that was what they would have been with the Red Cross, where they 
require like a 10 by 10 space where they can store their cots and other things on site. Um, and so it did not go that route in, in terms, because in exchange you would have gotten a, a generator. Um, that would have been the trade-off, I think. Uh, so it did not go that way. Uh, but having the school available as an emergency shelter, I think, was an ongoing discussion um, with the community about that. And I don't think it was contingent only upon it being Red Cross and we getting a generator. I think it was just a more, this is, you know, this will be another use for the community uh, if we go through this with this renovation. So. I think it was a, way to, a good way to sell it, too. What? Good way to sell the. Um, the to sell the project. Yeah, and <laughs> we turn to make it available. Um, okay, so that's, uh, I think that's it. So, um, so in, do you feel comfortable if we talk about the principal search? Um, I can leave, I can stay, it's up to you. So actually, I'm asking your comfort level. Well, I don't know what you're, are you just talking about? We're just going to talk process. process. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so, um, the, oh. So I'm going to still talk about process. We're, we're just going to get it because you have a little bit more knowledge in, than I do in terms of uh, where things are. Um, and we, we're just going to talk briefly about the principal search. Yeah. Um, and so my understanding is that the uh, advertising, well. Yeah, the advertisement has been out since uh, January 31st. Uh, it's been posted on School Spring. Um, Carl looked at the other day. I think there were at least 10 applications in. Um, I haven't looked at it at all. Um, we, Chris and I have been drafting a letter that I need to get out. I just haven't done it since Monday mm -hmm. when you and I finish going back and forth. Um, letting people know about forms and timeline to go forward. Uh, I'm trying to hire an outside consultant right now. Um, and to help with the search. Um, I've talked to t one person so far and they didn't have time in their schedule to do it. Um, with a search? With yeah, a search. To guide the search. Would with this, to guide the search. Would this be a cost incurred yes, this would by be a cost us? By Romney. So last time we talked about Jennifer Miller Arsenault overseeing this project process. Would that <coughs> would this person replace her? Yes. What's the closing period? When do the what's the closing period on the present? Or you ask for our application to start. We never put a closing period on it. It's something that we've learned not to do. Okay. What we do is say when applications will start to be reviewed, okay. which we put the end of a week from this Friday. And I'm not sure if this got mentioned before, but Julie Bristol sent an email to the board requesting to be on the principal and so, search so committee. Part of what Bill and yeah. okay, I put together is just going to be a communication to, um, you know, based on our discussion, we ended up um, um, having a devising committee of four staff members, uh, one of which would be a um, paraeducator, one special ed um, member from the staff, two board members, two community members. And we would um, put out a communication to the staff internally, and then on front porch forum for in folks who are interested in serving on the committee. Yeah, we, we do, we're having all, anyone who's interested in serving is gonna go to Carla Messier, our HR right. coordinator. So, Okay. And I, I, well, so we, okay. I responded so, to Julie on that, telling her that. Yeah. Some of the, the pieces on this is um, without having the lead person identified, it's trying to look at that, um, how we do these different pieces. And as Brian said, uh, there's a cost. So I know one of the things a consultant will ask me is, do you want me to do forums or do you want me to do online surveys? Because schools do both. Yeah, they do one or the other. They don't do both of them, but they do one or the other to gather the aspects from community or others. Chris and I are, we haven't even debated whether it's been one or the other. We've both been like, we want community forums. No. But we've got to look at the, co I mean, when I find a consultant that has uh, good references in the work they're doing, and I still have a couple to go that I know of, um, you know, I'm going to look at what that total cost package is. I've also said to Chris, if that's something that falls through, then it lands on my lap to do as your super. What, um, why, I guess, why are we going this route? Do we not have the availability of the support that we did last time? Um, 
there are some factors that were involved to say that Jen or Kelly shouldn't do this. And those factors, I think it would be best for the Rumney Middlesex community to have an outside facilitator to do the first tier. Um, I don't, I think it would be awkward, I, I, I don't know, a couple things. Uh, having someone, having sort of someone who's facilitating the process, having that shift partway through seems messy uh, to me. And so I'm kind of, I don't know, having a tr uh, trouble seeing how that would work in a cohesive way. Uh, and I guess I'm also not sure, are you saying that you don't think that the community would want either one of them to lead it or? I think it would be better, Chris and I have been and tell me if you disagree. We've no, been in agreement. The number one thing is to heal the Middlesex community. And I believe having someone from Central Office, so I believe when I asked Chris to bring it to you before, to have an outside facilitator, that the only way to see integrity in the process is to have an outside facilitator. In the Middlesex community. Is there concern that there wasn't integrity in the process? I'm just... It was, accused, it was accused in the first, at the beginning of the process, the last time, by some community members in Middlesex. Of, 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 so, of so, so I think um, of, of Jen felt like she was being thrown under the bus in some respects and uh, just felt uncomfortable about it. Um, and, you know, she, you know, fairly just feels that she shouldn't have to endure that uh, in some respects. I, I, so, I, can, I can put the respect that I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to understand so that's, the situation. So that's the, that's the concern. Uh, and, you know, I, I actually, do we, t do we try Don? No, where you, you Don, this is not his not specialty. His thing? Okay. This is not his yeah. cup of tea. So, um, so we're, that's, we're that's working on a couple people. So essentially, like a recruiter. It's that it's someone that works in the in the educational field that's done this work before, and they they usually are past principal or superintendent mm -hmm. that have done this type of work. They do it as a consulting service. They do it for other districts, and they usually will take it up to your finalist place. Um, and so they'll get up to the two finalists and then they'll pass it off from there. That doesn't mean that um, myself and the board aren't part of that process, mm -hmm. but it just means that you have this person facilitating the process and keeping the integrity of the hiring and the confidentiality that needs to be there in the hiring process in place. And so at what point would the, are you thinking that they would hand it off? So they would probably bring it up to two finalists. Okay. And then that would be handed off. And then from there we'd have the finalists. We'd probably have to reverse what we did last time, which is, and it's the way we usually do it in all the other district, all the other principal searches. We've done this, we've done it this way, not the way we did in Romney last time, is we bring the finalists in for site visits at the beginning to come into the into Middlesex for half days and then go conduct their site visits. Oh, where so they come here day. first. And then mm -hmm. we go second okay. and that wouldn't be the consultant that would be us doing that but we you know when we get into those second days usually every and it's a smaller subset of the committee that always does that it's usually about five people Kelly and I had the joy of doing it last year for Berlin mm -hmm. we did the trips together with Vera and a couple teachers so we anticipate having that I anticipate that we're probably going to be starting things up when we get back from town meeting but we'll get the notice out to the community before. Oh, yeah, that. no, I mean, it, it should have gone yesterday yeah. or the day before. Just stuff happened. Yeah. What, are you busy, Bill? What? Okay. Just uh, Bill, if he's a little busy. Well, my whole morning kind of got taken with something I wasn't anticipating, so. Um, I don't know when. I would encourage that, whether it's in the, the communication that goes out, how the um, search committee process, how, how it unfolds in terms of the, the group that becomes the search committee. But yeah. I would just, I see this as a great opportunity to engage voices um, in the process that aren't sort of usually people engaged in the process. And so really trying to make it a, as I don't know, welcoming an opportunity um, as, uh, as it could be. You know, I think that um, 
if there was one area, for example, that I see that could be improved on from the mm -hmm. last process, it's it's that it would be that area. So Do we have suggestions because I'm volunteers. It j I, uh, no, I, it's not. I'm just thinking. I, just, I would I think, like it to always be as open and co collaborative process as possible. Um, no, I guess I'm just. You know, how do we, how do we invite um, people, you know, to be part of it that aren't typically involved yeah. with this? Um, you know, I, I'm just thinking of the integrity of the process. Yeah. Is that if you have the same group of people mm -hmm. involved once again? You know, that's, you know, yeah, you can run into the same issues, yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah, very good point. I don't know if it's possible to do something like take all the members of the Middlesex community who are on the voter list and, uh, you know, put them in Excel, put, put a random well, number generator well, in there. Well, they have and to then, volunteer because it's going to be But what if we specifically ask people, can you come to this forum? Like, we, we generate, you draft know, we randomly yeah. the generate. Best, the best thing is to getting people to the forum. Yeah. And to come to the forum and say, what are the attributes and characteristics you want to see in a principal? Right. And then asking folks, because we always usually say, from the community side and from the teacher side, you've got to be able to represent these attributes and characteristics. You can't have your own. You've got to have these. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, we would ask you not to ask to be on the committee, because that's really important. Um, and you know, it's what happens is once you get into that committee piece for confidentiality and protecting the people that apply, because whenever you're in a leadership position, usually a, a bunch of the candidates already have a position somewhere else. So keeping that confidential is really, really important. Um, and so you can't be sharing that out beyond the committee until you get to the finalists where you say, when you're in a finalist, you're in a public, you're, it's open, people know who they are. So. Um, one of the other things that we have there, we have to uh, settle upon is um, who picks, um, and it's a kind of a time frame because um, it's the sense is that uh, the new unified board do mm -hmm. they pick or does this board pick, and, it, and it's a timing issue I think um, because unified board would be selected by April second in the election, so if this board wants to preserve its, can I can I say this? I would be shocked. I don't know who's going to be on the unified. But yeah. I assume there'll be board members that are sitting from our 32 members. Sure. That they, if they didn't take a recommendation of the existing Romney board, mm -hmm. that would, I would say, I'd honestly, be really shocked. Not that it couldn't it happen. It couldn't. I, I, you know, it's but I would be shocked. Trust but verify. <laughs> I, I would be shocked. You know, so it's a question that. that but I'm just should, saying, I agree right. with you to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to preface that by saying. And I tend to agree with you, but it's a, it, we shouldn't. Not be aware of that. Well, but do and that was I've had that question as well. Is do we even have the authority um, to make that? How uh, do we have the authority to do that? Do we just because preserve? no? Because we're still the operational board until. Uh, yeah, this is this is the question. I, Chris says no. I say I don't know. We're in different barks on this because oh, in terms of, of, of whether you have the authority to do it right now. I don't know. Oh, I think yeah. I say yes. I know you say yeah. yes. Oh, you okay. said I say no, and I say, no, oh, no, I say no, yes. No, no, you say, all right, so you yeah. say yes to that. Yeah. I say I don't know because yeah. there are some things about entering into contracts that we've been getting for advice that at one point was told, no, that's a decision from AOE. Now, that's been changing because of outside factors. When can we get crystal clarity? You're not. You won't have it. Don't 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 ask yeah, for don't it. Don't ask for it. Yeah. Right now, asking for crystal Fantastic. clarity is like. Let's ask for can we ask for mud? Who asked for forgiveness? Yeah. Um, so, so that's that's just something to keep in mind for the timeline. I, and I I mean I want I want you to hear this wholeheartedly. I want the Romney board to be able to say this is because I'm back to my initial thing. Chris and I had this discussion. With the two of us. I said for me it's about getting. I'm not so concerned about what the what is, but unification of the Romney community mm -hmm. yeah. has got to happen. That's how things are going to help the school move forward. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, I think I can help you with on your agenda. There are two other boards I haven't seen. Oh, um, I hope to actually just will, do you have any sense of cost? What are we talking about? So usually a consultant these days is anywhere from thirteen to $1,500 a day. 
we are in the wrong business, really. It's that much. And how yeah. many days with the work do we expect this to be? So yeah. So do we? It's probably. What's the be, hour? So the hourly rate is. Be, it's probably going to be three to five days worth of work. That's what I would say. Just because you're talking about the form, you're talking about you the travel, committee getting together, to getting the committee together. doing the interviews. Does it, does it have to be an administrator? What? Uh, the uh, the person that we're. Oh yeah. 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 They need to know the educational business. Well, I'm not saying. Could it be a former teacher? No, it has to be someone that's been in the. An administrator. Former administrator. Could it be a former administrator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, but that's the, all these so I'm, I'm looking at people that do this work because they know how to do it. They don't have to like re, they don't have to create stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're paying someone to create something. That dollar figure goes way up. The only other question I had was in regards to recruitment. Is School Spring the? I know that is has been the place that we everything gets posted to, but is that just the place? You know, Monster used to be the place. Uh, so you know, school, like, school Spring has been the place for education. It was actually bought out, so it's more of a national. I mean, there's so much on there from across the nation. It, you know, the only places you go now are then you go to publications and you're paying three to five thousand dollars for an ad like this. And if you want a quarter size page, you're in the five figures. I just I'm, I'm, I want to just make sure that we are casting the widest net. We could. It's a, it's, a, it's about Not, which, what you want to spend. For dollars. Well, I am just want to make sure that we're in the spaces where people are looking. Um, I think, I don't know what two of you guys think, but I think School Springs is the place to be. Mm -hmm. From what I see. Anybody in education is looking there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Multiple states. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't think there's anything else on the uh, agenda that would need. Okay, you're going to put. Oh, other than boiler. Uh, Amy, Amy said the bids are going out next week. Yeah. Okay. Roy was pretty close to having that finished last Great. night. I talked to him, which was like a week ago. Um, how about we're shooting for the fifteenth? Was the date? How about um, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, better go catch those boards. It look like a couple of them with this Yeah, I had to talk to two about negotiations. Don't forget to do that. All right, we we have an executive session Good. at the end. Um, I was running around was to get the ones that didn't have a rep. Okay, um, Amy, your uh, administration report. Hi. It's in the. I know it's in the. Uh, yeah. Any, you just uh, schools seem to be doing well. I think so. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you getting getting ready for uh, vacation? Um, it's been. It's we been. We are a, doing winter wellness, and everyone. Yeah. Great. I do think I have a question. I can pull it up you? there in just a second. Just one more time. Was there anything you had questions about, Chris? No. Nope. Specifically? Um, I had a question, Amy, about the, in the first paragraph, just understanding, uh, I don't completely understand the, um, what it's saying. Okay. The according to the, to this measure, we have eighty one percent of first graders at level three or four. Yeah, yeah. That's I, on grade level. So that, so that that's that's for grade level. level. Okay, mm -hmm. so so um, you can see that there's a bit um, some difference between where they're testing. You know, we've talked several times about triangulation uh, mm -hmm. across data points. FMP is showing um, you know a little bit higher than where our um, some of our measures are, like there's a bit of discrepancy between uh, what the STAR 360 is showing for third graders are capable of and what the FMP showed. So we're still, you know, this is a new um, version and we're still, Jessica Cobb is still working to calibrate with teachers to make sure that we're getting the tightest alignment that we can. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you can see that uh, we really are closing that gap. I really do feel like um, it's fairly likely by the end of the year we'll be at 80% in reading. That's terrific. So, that'd be terrific. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and the other question I had was regarding the professional development around social emotional mm -hmm. is, it sounds like there's 25 some odd staff members from across the SU. And I was just curious to know how many 
from Rumney are involved in that. In the Dave Melnick class? Yeah. Um, I've got a four, I believe. Yeah, but I mean, we've been doing quite a bit of that type of thinking, you know, since I arrived on mm -hmm. the site and um, are continuing to refine some of our systems of support there. Do you feel that um, more people, it would be, um, more people could, if, if there was more, I'm guessing there's limited slots or there's maybe there's a reason why there's 25 total, but I'm just wondering Well, if, and there's been um, kind of district-wide type of training yeah. also that everybody's access. Okay. So, you know, it does provide, um, you know, we've also had, you know, Sharon has done more in-depth training ahead of, you know, I kind of like to think of her as an early enlister, you know, that's there to kind of guide and support um, some of those discussions. You know, it certainly uh, emerges within the SST team uh, where we're trying to pull the, together the pieces um, for students. So, um, you know, I think some of the best um, evidence that I have is that, you know, really kids are so much more open and willing to seek adult help, um, that we're making progress as far as um, helping kids stay regulated um, proactively as opposed to reactively. Um, and, you know, if I, as I've mentioned, have had some significant needs emerge that we've been able to navigate as a team. So um, I think all those are evidence of that good district-wide learning. Mm -hmm. You know, Kate, um, the principal from Calus made a comment tonight about whether <coughs> the um, social-emotional aspect can run in conflict with potential disciplinary system is how I understood her to say that. Um, is there any sense of that in terms of what we have that, did you, did you hear her say that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, since I arrived at Romney, I've been trying to reset how we think about discipline mm -hmm. and to frame it more as lagging skills than a kid just being a bad kid. Yeah, okay. And um, that's something I feel very passionate about. So, um, you know, and there's been systematic things that we've done to try to instill that from restorative conversations to um, actually, if you look at a think sheet, it's actually a restorative conversation that's scaffolded for a teacher to go through with kids. Um, so I, I actually see Lemney as leading the pack in some of this thinking. Good, thank you. So yeah. I think further evidence of that is the awesome thinking that um, kids are showing within Coco Talk. Yeah, that was really impressive. Did you see the that yeah. they brought me last month? No, but... Yeah, so last month I actually had students arrive at Coco Talk with notes that they had collaborated on with other students. <laughs> Based on a previous Coco Talk or just... They know, uh, all the kids know what the deal is, like yeah. what, it, what our format is and what it's going to look like. and. Now, they not only brought notes themselves, but actually set the charge for the group that from now on, if you're invited to a Cocoa Talk, you should come prepared. And then they put it back on me that I need to type up the notes so that they can report back to their classes. So if there's a rep from the Cocoa Talk that's there, they will present, which is building our communication skills in authentic ways. If there's not, then the teacher will show that back. So. Um, I was, my heart could have burst. That's great, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, so next up is our, um, do we, any? Actually, I, I want to just, you asked a question of AB, and <clears throat> since I am well versed in the ways at the school, first I should say, I get so many fewer calls that say Romney now, so like I think things are going really well. I think the things you've done have been, at least from my perspective, have been really, really great. Though, to speak to your question though, I think one issue we run into is that parents expect discipline when another child has done something that impacts their child, and that continues to potentially be an issue we run into. So um, occasionally, theoretically, I might see running school on my phone, and theoretically, my, my child might have done something that um, the person calling me understands full well wasn't you know, came from a different place, a place that was not a bad child place, and yet there still has to be discipline happening because the other parents who were involved 
expect that. And I understand that too, but I think that's a road, you know, we've done more and more education, but continuing to do the outreach that like Amy's been doing is really helpful to I think get other parents on board and understanding that it doesn't always mean something. Well, I think that it's that we are still doing something and A, I can't speak to what a consequence is for another child um, to another parent. I'm not going to share what right. a consequence right. yeah. that one child is having that's not under your roof. Yeah. Um, and secondly, that there can be action that isn't punitive. Right. Um, or maybe um, a mix of a consequence with a support um, is really, because I, I do believe and our data tracking has gotten so much better that we're actually able to pull and go like, has this happened before? You know, like, oh, they have had something. You know, this is a thing. Um, which is actually helps us yeah. in those other conversations to act appropriately. Because it's not on the parent to remember that this thing keeps emerging between these two kids. Does that make sense? No, it does. I mean, I, I think everything that's happening is really positive, and I think as the community learns more, it's like, really, we should probably mention that the staff has been doing this trauma training and some of these things, so our community starts to continue to get this. Um, because I see, like, Marilyn's over here nodding, and I would certainly nod, but, you know, five years ago, I may not have been nodding the same way just because I had a different life experience. So, I, But I think as our community learns more about it, there's more and more acceptance of punishment does not necessarily equate to learning in any sort of reasonable social or emotional way for a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. And so. So okay. may I just humbly suggest something? Sure. Then if you treasure, if you appreciate that work, you need somebody who knows restorative practices. Mm -hmm. You know, staff? As a principal, right. As a on leading. leading. Yeah. yeah. I, I totally agree, yeah. actually. In fact, I think that's probably been the most impressive I mean, I'm sure there's lots of other impressive things that you've brought, but that is something that's really stood out to me. I feel like you've really tried to focus on um, on social emotional learning in a very restorative way. And I think it's definitely benefited. As you pointed out, the bus, you know, the changes in what's happening on the buses. And Kids actually come to me and say, you know, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to coming into my office and stonewalling. Yeah. Or blaming. And um, those are huge beautiful changes in our student body. Yeah, I think it's really, and I think all of the teachers have started, there's been, it's been really impressive. I think you've done a lot for the school in that regard. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next up is uh, our action agenda. Uh, and I'm, going to suggest that we table 5.1 on the principal preservation policy because that is something we should have to be at full strength for and we are not in voting on and discussing that um, is there Ken, a I, I, I'm, Go ahead. I'm I'm done with this being on the agenda and not, not, not doing then, anything about it then we so either vote for it? I say we I I, I, I want to call a question and okay. I want to just get this done with because okay. this has been like six months well, uh, it's I'd actually, like to it's been over a year. Well, no, I, but I'd it's been, been the it's action been over a year. an action agenda item. Um, call the question. Uh, so I uh, move to adopt D three Romney School Principal Preservation Policy. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, is there a discussion? Since we've had. Okay. Um, I, can I? I know what Chris's thoughts are, but I'd like to hear yours, Brian. Um, so. You don't have I, to. No, it's, <laughs> it, this is, uh, I don't know how fresh they are at this point, yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest with you. Um, I, you know, top of mind is it's, um, it, we are, you know, our legal counsel has, advise that it's not good policy um, and you know I had some other concerns that like I said probably three or four or five or six months ago or longer were more fresh in my mind um, but yeah I, I know where I stand on it okay and, um, I, and I have expressed my 
support for the policy, um, and I think it is a uh, stopgap measure, and it's a measure that would require the board, uh, for however, however long it is in existence, uh, to take a step. Um, and it may at this point be symbolic, um, but I think it is a um, important symbol of how we perhaps should have acted uh, in the past and not taking a step and being more uh, involved and assertive. So um, I'm going to support the policy because it is, again, it's a, a stopgap stop measure, um, and I don't think it undermines the authority of the administration, which I think is what the uh, uh, Pietro Lynn was concerned about. Um, going into policy as opposed to legal analysis, uh, as he was. Um, so I would certainly support it, uh, and um, for all those reasons. Uh, Allison, any discussion on your end? Um, I guess the only problem is what if we can't get a quorum within 48 hours with an emergency meeting? Then, then the meeting won't happen. And then what? Like, then where is the principal at that point? Um, that, that is a fair question. Um, I don't. So let's. So just so I can get it on the record and get out of here sooner, I have some concerns about this policy. One, the legal concerns, um, and two, like I don't really understand why we well, not like. I don't feel like we need this. I feel like all of the rules around surrounding the process are already in place. That said, I think that this is something our community, at least the vocal, the more vocal members of it that I have talked to me about it, I think this is something that they want, and so I suppose I, well, I like I said, I had a little concern about what if, you know, the, the practicality of, well, what if we can't meet, then where are we, are we in limbo, do we, can we turn it back over to the superintendent if we can't get together within 48 hours, but. So, so I think that that is a, again, the um, chances of that happening are not great, mm -hmm. um, just because it, it sounds like we're uh, widespread. Um, and in terms of the rules that are surrounding it, the rules are surrounding it did not did not activate last time. Um, the you know they just didn't, and this does compel a response. And so um, in that respect, I think it is helpful mm -hmm. um, because the rules last time did not compel a response. I mean, you're right. It sounds like the rules were that the board chair had to be contacted, but not the entire board. Right. And so it, it kind of stopped there. Right. So. So are we ready for a vote? Anyway, we can vote. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. No. Okay. Motion carries. And thank you following the question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, do we have a resolution on Romney educational goals? No. Uh, and so we're going to table the emergency um, shelter? Mm -hmm. I'll prepare and something for that. Okay. Out to everybody. And so we are at the... What about fund, that's fund what balance? Is, yeah, what is this motion on fund balance? You know what, that was, that was on from last time, but you actually took care of it. When you... Um, okay. it, was, it was a concern about... It's um, about transferring the funds from reserves to... Right. Yeah. But that's okay. what we passed last time, right? We did talk about that last time, yeah. And we passed it. We did pass it. We did pass it. Um, so we're at the point that we're going to go into executive session. Um, so thank you, everyone, for coming. Marilyn.